Hey guys, how's it going? If anyone's in the chat right now, hello, hello. It is, it is Title Tuesday time, July 2018. Just firing up the stream right now, and the game is about to start. The first game. Oh, I gotta turn this down. Okay. <laughs> How's it going, B Nove? Extra next, Henry, RPG. Strenic, Spazola, hello. You guys watching the World Cup? I've got on that England Columbia match, and I just saw that Columbia scored. Oh, board is cut off? Oh, you're, you are right. Ah, that is a problem. I know why that is. Let's fix this, guys. We got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm sorry about the sloppy start. I can't turn off this match, though. We got to keep this on in the background. <laughs> okay, that'll do for now. Let's take... And I'll get the standings up here in just a minute. Hey, Chess Bay. Yes, you can watch soccer in the background. That's right. We're watching the footy. Okay, let's castle. Now, I want to get in B4 soon, but let's prep it. So I'm going to go here with an eye towards doing that. Hello, excellent king, pots are to master. Thanks, Basid. Got the coffee. I'm good to go. I don't think this position is so optimal for a minority attack because he could play a4 here and stop me, but it's all right. Uh, let's, hmm. If 95, he'll probably play knight e7. Let's play rook fc1. This is generally a useful move. Hey, Axiom Fox. Jay Miller. Uh, now, to play h3 or not. That's always a big debate in these positions. Yeah, let's play h3. I want to go knight e5, but again, like, he has this knight e7. I think he's probably going to stick his bishop on d6. I might play queen c5 and start maneuvering. Okay, knight into e4. Makes sense. Okay, let's go, let's go here and see what he does. This knight's a bit annoying. Also, maybe I could threaten that in the future. Hey, Chessy Bus. Let me know if, if anything interesting happens back there, please. <laughs> I know very little, little, little about soccer, but I'm definitely following this match with some interest. Uh, okay, Queen C5. Yeah, let's jump in. Thanks, Magash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my opponent's not giving me much to work with here so far. Guess let's take. Could play for b4, but I have a feeling that that's going to be more of a weakness than anything. So let's back off. Snatch Pato, thank you for the subscription. Okay, knight back to d6. Yeah, this is really tough to do anything. Go back in and just see what his intentions are. Excellent king, one bit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. I don't want to draw yet. Let's see if we can force a trade here. Maybe pressure b7. Maybe a4 is sometimes loose. Weak in the long run. Okay, so now he's getting some aggressive ideas towards my king. Let's hide. 
If knight h4, I'll play here and defend. Also, knight f4 is possible, but let's play rook g1. That looks a little more sturdy. And Chessie Bus, thanks for the resubscription. Four months. Okay, knight f4. Knight f4, he can play h5, so... Ooh, can you play knight f3 against this? Well, we'll play it anyways. Knight f3, I have to move my rook. Okay, he's not going to try it. Let's see where he goes with this. Propose a queen trade. Okay. Um. G3, queen, G4. Yeah, let's play G3. I'm about a minute behind on the clock, but I'm going to go here next move, I think. Maybe knight D3, depending where his knight goes. Yeah, let's go knight D3. So looking at these two squares, keeping queen g4 in reserve. So much maneuvering going on here, guys. Okay, time to get this annoying queen out of there. I know he can jump in here. But I'm thinking that's okay. Let's take... And then pull this knight back. I'm going to go f6 king here. Try to put a rook on h8. Is knight d2 anything? I don't think so. It does feel like I'm a little worse here though now. I have to level with you guys. Okay, I feel like it's time for this move. It's a move I wanted to prepare a long time ago, but never felt like I had the chance. Okay, let's stop him from playing knight d2 in the future. f3 coming later, kick out this knight, try to pressure this. Expecting a B-pawn move, B5 maybe. Hmm. I'm a little surprised by that move. Maybe g4 next, assuming rook a7. Huh. You're going to let me take, huh? Okay. Okay, now, can I do anything in this position? It's going to be tough. I'll try, though. h4? Let's start with h4. Obviously, don't have a whole lot of time. But my structure is a bit more compact than his. So that's why it feels like maybe I could do something here. Let's play f3. Okay. Maybe f5. Because my rook is, is attacking both of these pawns. I'm trying to put him in some sort of zugzwang. It's probably not going to happen. Okay, do this. Okay, f5 check. I want this. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, also I'm threatening maiden too. Rook h8, rook h5. Ooh, okay. Opportunity here, guys. I'm going to win the f6 pawn. So 
take. Trying to grind it out here in the first game. I have the option of rook g6 whenever I want it. Ooh, now I win another pawn. We got this, guys. If we don't mess up big time, we got it. Rook g6, rook takes g5 coming. Just run him out of rook moves. No stalemate tricks. No way to attack my pawns. All right, there we go. Felt like a bit of a swindle. I think he just messed up there, but yeah, I had a slightly better position after I got my rook to c7, that rook end game. And especially key was rook h8, I think, because rook h8, try to come around the back, threaten mate in two. Uh, Dan Hewitt donated $5. Said, hey, John, it's been over a year since I've caught one of your streams, but I still love your videos. I'm the one who used to bully you about keeping your door open. <laughs> I remember you, Dan. I remember you very well. Thanks for watching. Oh, and he donated five dollars twice. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Dave Vasquez resubscribed four months. Thank you, Dave. All right, let's get these standings up here. Once more, I apologize for the sloppiness in getting started here, guys. I'm gonna blame it on the match here in the background. Okay. So this is a 10 round tournament, three plus two blitz. My next norm tournament, tourney, not gonna be for a while. Tom Cruise. Yeah, I don't have any planned at the moment. I actually don't even have even a shorter tournament planned. I might be playing a five round tournament in September here in Minnesota. But yeah, I'm going to take a little break for a while. Got some stuff to do. Okay, so there's still an extra time. So how much extra time do they play before the penalty kicks? Before the shootout? It's variable, right? Let's pull up a game while we're waiting. Hmm. GM versus GM matchup in round one. I guess because this guy has a fairly low rating for a Grandmaster. White trying to squeeze out a win in a theoretical draw. Okay, so... Two lots of 15 minutes. So 30 minutes total? Okay. Do they have a timeout after 15 minutes? How does it work? Yeah, there's a lot of these theoretical endgames in Title Tuesday. You tend to see almost every theoretical endgame under the sun. There's two other games going. Let's see what these ones are. Okay, that one's not a theoretical endgame. It is a queen endgame. This opposite color bishop position, that's a complete draw. So let's go back to that first game. So my goal in Title Tuesday is always to get a positive score. It's such a difficult tournament, especially with commentary. So anytime you get a positive score, that's usually pretty good. I typically score, I'd say, five and a half to six points. If I'm being completely honest about my results in the past, that's probably about my average, which is not that impressive. Uh, but I think last time, I want to say last time I got six and a half. So I feel like I have it in me at some point to pop off a... Uh, seven point result in this tournament through 10 rounds. So I'd really like to put in a score like that. But anything positive is good. Okay, so black is now on the edge of the board. Black has to be careful. Positions should still be fine. But anytime your king gets to the edge of the board like that, you gotta calculate. Clanger says seven would be fantastic, I agree. Okay, does white have a threat? I don't see one. But black ran out of time. 
That's one way to win the game if you're white. Run your opponent out of time. All right, any other games going? Nope. All right, second round coming up. Let's try to build on this result, guys. Ground out a victory in that first run. I was down on the clock. Get another white playing Mukin 1. I think this guy is one of the top seeds, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, he's 29-20 in Blitz. That's a pretty darn high rating. Okay. Let's play main line. Oh, why did I play knight f3? I don't play knight f3 here. <laughs> Alright, whatever. We'll make it work. Uh, okay. I was just spacing out for a second. This might transpose to something that I'm, I'm more comfortable with, though. Do I play the London ever? Very rarely. But I think I'm actually going to be working on a London repertoire on Chessable along with one of our other employees, Daniel Barish. He's a FIDE master. So, yeah, I might be playing the London more often in the future because I want to practice those positions. Okay, so E7 is not truly hanging here, is it? Probably not. If I take and then queen b3. Mm. Nah, I'm not sure about that, so I'm just going to develop. You could take and maybe play queen c7. Play queen b3. We'll go from there. Knight a5, perhaps. Okay. But yeah, queen c7 hits my bishop, and obviously I don't want to lose the c3 pawn behind. Uh, I could also play knight d2 here, but I feel like I should keep more of an eye on e5. I want to make sure e5 doesn't mess me up later. But yeah, he can play knight c6 here, which is a bit annoying. Maybe I go bishop g3, I don't know. We will find out. Yeah, let's do this. Hit the queen. E5. Okay. So now bishop back to E2 feels appropriate here. Yeah, again, got to take care because of that threat. He is pinned. I don't want to take on E5 and open the center while my king is still here, I think. I think that would be too provocative. Uh, d5. d5, you might have e4. Hmm. Okay, let's take on e5. Feels kind of weak, though. I think he's easily equalized here at the very least. Possibly he's better after knight takes because I do have this weakness. So if he plays knight takes, should I just castle? He plays bishop e6, okay. So he wants a developing move. Okay. Okay, I see you. Yeah, he's going to have a structural advantage after he takes here, because I, I don't think I can get away with taking on b7. Uh, well, definitely not right now, but even in the near future. Okay, so now he's threatening to take and take on c3. So I could swap everything in castle. Again, I'm just a little worse if I do that. I could play knight d4. Knight d4, he might have knight c4. I could... Ugh, I could have issues there. I think I gotta swap everything in castle. Which I'm not thrilled about, but... Yeah, it seemed necessary. Bishop a6, maybe? First period of extra time, over. Bishop a6, queen a5. 
Okay, let's giddy up with this pawn. See if I can play a5 somewhere. Yeah, 29.20 is a pretty nice rating. <laughs> I mean, that is a good one. Okay, let's hide this dude. Thinking here, next move. That invites the rook into d2. It's tough to find a move, though. Okay, let's just wait for a second. Guess I gotta go passive to defend that. Hmm. Queen e4, I have this, fortunately. Oh, that might not even be good, though. Oh, then I have f3 after that. Okay, that could save my bacon. My time is low, obviously. I gotta, I gotta move faster. b5 might be good, yeah. All right. Be a6 after this. If I lose this, I maybe can take this at the end. Oh, but there's that. I guess I have c4 for now, but feels like I'm playing with fire here. Maybe a move like king g8 would be decent for him. He's going to play it more forcing, okay? My opponent is smelling blood in the water. Um, duh, this is tough. I think I'm busted here, guys. Yeah, I didn't see anything. If I take yes, queen f3, I think it was just losing there. Not much to do. C2 looks good. B2 is possible. Yeah, this is busted. Rook C1. Mm. Just got to outplay that game. I messed up my move order in the opening. I never play knight f3 on move 3. For some reason, I was thinking he was going to play e6 as in the previous game, which I don't know how to explain that. But yeah, that was that was just tough against a very good player. I mean, I made it, I made it out of the opening all right after 19 moves, as in I didn't lose any material. But castling on move 19 and having a worse pawn structure, being down on the clock against a better player, that's a recipe for disaster. And I don't think. Let me go back here. I don't think when he played rook takes c3, I really could do much else. I want to take his pawn on b5, but I think I just run into queen f3 at all times. So, like, if I swipe here, this, oh, not that one, queen here. He's got the dual threats, which, even though I'm pinning the rook, I can't do anything about. Likewise, if I insert the trade on c3, so take, rook takes, that doesn't change anything. It's still this issue. So dead. All right, let's take a look at a game. Oh, let's actually watch Penguin. Let's watch Andrew. Mr. Tang, trying to grind it out here against Jamir. Andrew's down on the clock. This guy's going to pick up this pawn. Andrew has this B pawn. So it looks like he'll stay up a pawn. Maybe some drawing chances for black, I don't know. Okay, black gets behind that pawn. That's probably wise, especially in time pressure. Just stop the more dangerous pawn. Probably check here first. Make Andrew play bishop c3. Z Fox asks, how do you deal with losing to a lower rated player? How to deal with the ego pain? 
Yeah, it's always painful. Just gotta play another game, man. <laughs> or possibly take a break if it really affects you. Taking a break, analyzing, maybe studying a little bit. It's usually a good idea. Yeah, I think this game's gonna be a draw. I think Andrew's gonna take and then take on d4 and call it a day here. Uh, and White will not lose this. Yeah, f2, take, draw. Any other streamers in the mix here? I'm sure there are. Uh, let's watch Krikor. GM Krikor from Brazil. Now that's a team that's doing well in the World Cup, right? They probably have the best chance to win right now, statistically, huh? Okay, and Krikor will win this one. A7. That pawn is going to Valhalla. Um, okay, let's watch these guys. Oppo Bishops. This is a total draw. White can draw this even without this G-pawn, I believe. Basically sticking their bishop on G5 and waiting. So, if White loses the G-pawn, that's no problem. It's a, that's a fortress. He's going to stick the bishop there as soon as Black takes and threatens both these pawns. And now he can just move his king. There's actually an endgame almost identical to this in this book that I recommend all the time. Amateur to I Am by Jonathan Hawkins, who's now a GM, but when he wrote it, he was an I Am. And he analyzes a fortress with opposite color bishops. Yeah, almost identical to this. There's been a lot of diving in this match, hasn't there? I know that's the soccer stereotype, but I just tuned in for the second half of this game and just constant diving. <laughs> okay, this rook end game looks easily winning for white. This B pawn is a monster. Get the rook behind. And then just dance with the king. Yeah, black's king is much too far to be able to do anything here. Just do this and then pop out on one side. Mm, don't, okay, yeah, you can play it that way too. Get the king to the A file. I could have just played king A7 too. So we're one and one after two rounds. Round three coming up. Angry Serb. I am angry Serb. Didn't play well that last game, so let's try to rebound here, guys. Mm. You guys feeling what I'm feeling? I've got a fever. And the only prescription is more Scandi. Okay, this line is worse for black. There's no doubt about it. But I like playing it in blitz because black's plan is very easy. I'm probably going to use the same piece deployment that I use every other time in this line. So you castle, you put this knight here, you play a6, you play rook d8. I'm going to play a6 first now to stop knight b5. And you're going to look to play c5 at some point. Usually white gets impatient. Like now they'll typically play this move. Rook d8, and then uh, maybe not impatient, but white looks to do something, keep pressing forward. So don't be surprised to see g4 followed by knight e5. Maybe knight e5 first. Usually white throws this knight in. But yeah, rook fd1. So now white has, you know, optimized their setup. And this is usually how they try to make progress, one of these two ideas. They can try to force through a center break, but I don't think d5 actually bothers black very much. Gives me the c5 square. If the queen goes back here, I have, I have bishop g6. So, I mean, especially in a blitz game, I feel like the disadvantage is manageable in this position. And I actually have more time than I started with, which is extremely rare for me. Okay, bishop h2. And now probably h6 is what I should do. He's kind of marking time, so I can do the same. Useful move. Just always prepares an escape route for the king. After bishop g6, knight h4, I can, I can drop this back. 
Okay, queen c2, probably bishop g6. Also looking at c5 right away. c5, d5. Mm. c5, d5, take. It's probably okay. Let's do that. Because here he's going to almost certainly play this move, so there's no reason to rush. Okay, let's take. Expecting him to take with the knight? No, he takes with the pawn. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, let's play this now. Bishop d3, take, and then maybe c4 coming up. Maybe I push this pawn. And try to gain a little space for myself. Although then I lose control of c6 down the line, potentially. Okay, let's uh, let's play this bishop back first. So he has his pass pawn, but unclear right now if that's a strength or a weakness. Hopefully I can prove that it's a weakness. Kind of surround it, use my majority later. Okay, queen c6 comes to mind. Uh... Yeah, let's play queen c6. Control the d5 square. Maybe start trying to surround that d6 pawn. Gotta watch out for knight e5. So let's overprotect. I like my knight here, just blockading. Maybe I can double on this file. And say, alright, you've got this well protected, but what are you really doing here? Okay, queen e4, knight e4. Nah, let's just double. I mean, I guess he's going to put the knight here or something. No back rank business I have, huh? That'd be nice if I did, but it doesn't seem to work. Okay, now I definitely can't play for b5, though. He goes right back, interesting. Knight e4, knight e4 just swaps. b5. Okay, I'm going to try to bait him here. If he goes knight e5, he loses. It's perhaps a tempting move. Maybe not. Ooh, but I think he loses now. Because I have queen takes d5 next. And the back ranker. Am I missing anything here? I don't think so. I think that's just winning. All right. It's nice when a trap works out. So, yeah, if he takes, guys. So he's got the bishop here blocking his king's escape route. Check. And that's just a back rank. Okay. Because I was mentioning I can't play b5 a moment ago. Uh, because if I were to play b5 right around here, I might run into knight d4. So, I think once his knight comes back, it was appropriate to play that, though. Knight c3, b5 looks justified now when knight d4 is not possible. Dan Hewitt, thanks for the dollar. Thanks again, Dan. He says, Scandy fever, five seconds later. Yeah, this line is worse for black. <laughs> Gotta go study for German. Peace out, John. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I'll see you in the YouTube comments. All right, so we get a little victory there. Uh, what other games are in play? That game looks winning for white, probably. Let's put this one up. I'm going to run to the bathroom, guys. We're 2-1 and one through three games. I'll be right back.
Okay, guys. This game is going to penalties real soon, isn't it? Let's check out who else is in this tournament. I didn't get a chance to see if there was any truly big names, like top 10 in the world, guys. No Magnus, no Hikaru, as far as I can tell. No MVL. He also plays this tournament from time to time. This guy's really good. This is a player to watch over the next few years. Ali Reza Faruja. I mean, he's already one of the best online players. I think he's only 15 years old-ish. From Iran. Part of the contingent of really good young Iranian players. So yeah, keep an eye on this guy. This game should be a draw. White's trying to make something of it. You can see King G7. He was threatening Rook here, mate. But, okay, King G7 now? This black can... No, he can't take with the pawn because he gets mated with Rook A5. Is King G7 winning? Oh, no, black can take here. You can take there and create a escape route for his king. Okay. So that's what black is banking on. Okay, this should definitely be a draw now. G4. Only move. Oh, no. G4, Rook A5. Again, wow, he tricked him. That was incredible. Wow. That was really nicely played by White. That was tricky. And Black was running out of time, too. Let me go back and see that. Very sharp Rook endgame all of a sudden. So he plays F4. Wow. Trying to create a pass pawn. I mean, Black could take here right away. Maybe he should. Maybe Rook F3. This pit stop on F3 was not... Not good, because now Rook H8 is threatened. Take. Yeah, there's... I mean, again, he could play this move, right? He could play that. Why didn't he play that, actually? And then allow the king to run. I don't know. That seems to work. But instead, fortune favored the brave. Take King G7, and I think black is busted here. Yeah. Rook H8 is the primary threat, and then you have this auxiliary threat of Rook A5 if the G-pawn moves. Hey, Belgian novice. Good to see you here. Off to penalties, they say. Okay, queen endgame here. Looks like a dead draw. Black's up a pawn, but can't do anything. His king is too weak. This also is a dead draw. White's pressing, but I think even without this pawn, it's probably a draw. So lots of players on 3 out of 3. Pretty crowded at the top still. First couple of rounds went really fast. Now it's slowing down a little bit. Some longer end games. What's going on in this other game? Queen end game. White up a pawn. This one was drawn. Oh, that's a commercial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Had an announcer screaming goal. This game is still going. That's the last one in the round. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for white to even try to make progress here. Unless black blunders their bishop, because you have to win the b-pawn for one thing, and I mean, there's no way you can get your king and your knight attacking this pawn. White could try to check the black king out somehow, but it's not going to happen. Now, this is too big of an ask here to win this for white. That was a clickbait TV ad, that's right. <laughs> Oh, 
It's like when you're listening to the radio and you hear police sirens in an ad. And that always freaks you out like, oh my god, am I getting pulled over? Yeah, White is not doing anything here. I mean, if I were to bet, it's more likely that Black will win this pawn than White will win this pawn. <laughs> so now King C6, and yeah, White's just going to go take this and make a draw. Okay, round four coming up here, guys. Pretty low turnout for this Title Tuesday, right? 209 players? That seems low. I feel like usually Title Tuesday gets closer to 300. Uh, playing Tennis Master. Okay, this is... Is this Dominguez? Maybe Quezada? One of these Cuban grandmasters. All right, you guys know what time it is. We're sticking with what works. Thanks, Clanger. All right, so let's see if he plays knight after your bishop c4 or some other move. Unieski K is out as his chess bay. Okay, yeah. I played this guy before. I think I've even played him in Title Tuesday before. Uh, okay, c6. Bishop b3 is a bit of an unusual move to start with. Now I feel like black is already pretty, pretty okay. Now do I trade? Or do I invite g4, knight e5? It's a bit risky to do that, but I actually think here it might be acceptable. I'm going to try it. Just because of the way he played the opening. He didn't play h3 as early as you usually would. So knight e5 here. And if h4, take, 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 I can take on d1 at the end. Because the, the key consideration is whether white can play h4 here favorably and try to trap your bishop. Because uh, you don't want to play h6 and allow knight takes g6. That just totally shatters your pawn structure. But here, yeah, on h4, I take, he takes, I take, he takes back. And then... I guess I could maybe take on c2 later for one thing, but I have knight takes g4 is the main thing. So that's why it's not good for him to play that way. He'll probably take on g6 if I had to guess. I think he'll swap here and try to squeeze me with the two bishops. But then maybe these kingside pawns are a weakness. That's what I'll try to argue. He goes there. Okay. So bishop b4 comes to mind. Um, taking on e5, of course. I could try that. Um, queen a5 even. Let's see. I think I'm going to play bishop b4. And pin that knight. The saint donated $5. Says good luck, bud. Thanks, the saint. Appreciate it. Ooh, okay. The PKs have started. Now here, can I try to win the d4 pawn? Or is that too bold? You guys know I'm pretty greedy. But that might be too bold even for me. Let's start with knight b6, though. Let's see where he goes. He might castle here. He does. Okay, so if I take on d4, that's inviting bishop takes e6 for one thing. Let's just snatch this light square bishop. And then I might take here too, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. And then this, this typical queen d5 operation. Queen d5 is such a nice move. It'll hit a2, might threaten knight takes g4, depending upon what he does. I think he has to trade now. And I should be pretty satisfied with that resulting endgame. Which way to take? Let's take with this pawn. Usually that's the desirable capture. Okay, now I think I'm going to do this and then probably play on the C file. He's got to watch his H pawn. That's always kind of a weakness here. He might play H4. Yeah, so let's reposition this knight. It's not doing anything on f6. It's restricted. So let's get him out. OK, 
Can I just do this? Let's see how he reacts to that. I think he has to play Rook here. Threatening to double. Hmm. Okay, let's push this. Uh, don't know about this move. Might be a weakness, but we'll see. Hmm. Interesting position. Let's go here. Don't want to use too much time here. Okay. I'm just going to wait. We'll keep this rook here. I mean, I know it's kind of tempting to move it over, but I think it's better just to wait, just bide our time. Now I'm going to break here and see if I can attack this pawn. Maybe this now? Okay, now I want to get this rook back over. As long as he can't play c4. So I really like my knight on b5. I don't want him to be able to kick this out later. Okay, I've got this idea if I need it. But let's try to coordinate here better. This is looking promising. I don't know that I'm better per se, but it looks unpleasant for him already. I'm so curious what's going on back there. Uh, okay, maybe get this over. I need to protect this dude better so I can free up my rook. Okay, so he's looking for breakthroughs over there. E5... I uh, don't know. Okay. I'm send that over. Hmm. Let's see where that rook goes. play faster. You can take on e6, but I take f3. I, fi I figure that's good for me. Oh, he's going to do it. Hurry. Almost slipped there. Be some mating net ideas. He does have to be careful here. Let's check on B eight. Still though, his king is in difficulties here. I feel. Unless I botch it like I'm doing. Mm. I don't know. 
This is tough. No mating nuts, please. Maybe I can mate him. Knight c3. He probably just advances. Check. Check. Ooh, I might be winning, guys. I might be winning. Wow. And if rook b2 check, I think I got him here. I think I got him, even though his c pawn's on the verge of promotion. I think I swindled him. Yeah, he's busted. Just a mating pattern. Wow. The Scandy Swindle. We need a Scandy Swindle emote. <laughs> Ooh. I felt my position was good, but I let it I let it start drifting, I think, once he took on E6 and I took on F3. This should be very good for me. You know, once I get knight c3, rook f1 in. Um, felt like I almost had a mating net, or at the very least, some sort of perpetual. But honestly, like, closer to a mating net. Also, if I move this rook, knight b1 could be a threat. But yeah, he was able to trade a pair of rooks, because I just flat out let him with rook b6, which is probably not a good move. a5, on the other hand, looks pretty strong here. I think that's much more natural. He's not threatening anything. I've got d5 guarded. But yeah, just uh, got him later. So kind of stumbled into that, but rook, knight, and king. That's a potent attacking combination. So thank you guys for the love. Uh, Belgian novice cheered 200 bits. Swindling with the Scandi. Thanks, Belgian novice. Chessy bus, 50 bits. It says awesome mate. Yeah, thanks, guys. That was a fun one. All right, let's get a game up here. Oh, England must have won. Wow. So they win after all. Wow, okay. I don't see the score there yet, but what was the score on the penalty kicks? Yeah, that's brutal for the Colombian fans. As the commentator just said, England probably should have won in regulation, but, you know, that's why they play the full 90-plus minutes, I guess. Four to three on penalties. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah, let's turn this off. One on the last kick. I totally missed that. <laughs> I had more important things to do, like trying to checkmate when my opponent was about to queen. Oops. Last game of the round here. Pedro Martinez versus Amazda, 13. White wins. Okay. All right. Round five. Abhijit Gupta. Strong grandmaster from India. Let's go mainline D4 again. Okay. I'll try to play it correctly this time. Grunfeld. I'm going to play this Queen A5 check variation. I played this OTB a couple times with decent results. Just a disruptive move. That's the point of this. Okay. Uh, was I supposed to play Queen A3 on the previous move? I think I was. I think I was. Can't quite remember. <laughs> Already trying to remember my prep. I think I was supposed to play queen a3 instead of knight f3 to stop c5. Because now if I do it, I have problems with the d4 pawn. Okay, let's go here. This should still be okay, though. I mean, I am playing the white pieces after all. 
But I would like to be I would like to avoid being worse with white after 20 moves as I was in that second game. Okay, queen c7. It's castle, maybe bishop g4 here, I don't know. At least he's thinking as well. He does play bishop g4. Okay. Let's let him take on f3 if he wants to double up my pawns. At least I'll get the two bishops. Pull this guy back. If b5 I can take, because this is undefended. Ninety seven. Probably prepping for B five. Okay, bring this over. B five, Queen B three. Plays e5. That's interesting. Definitely a plausible structural decision, though. Hmm. All right. I think d5 is critical, so I'm going to play that. Otherwise, I probably don't have anything. And that might just be a little worse. So I've got to establish this protected pass pawn. Maybe play d6 coming up. Maybe. If he goes b5, do I play d6 immediately? I could try it. See where his queen goes. That pawn's pretty annoying for him. But I gotta make sure that after f5, I don't run into f4 ideas. Yeah, let's play d6 straight away. Puts the queen back on b8. Okay. So now queen a3, maybe? Queen a3 hinders my ability to play... A4, though. Let's go here. Again, he might do this. But I'm thinking perhaps rook d5. Eh, I don't know. It's unclear. But I felt like this needed to be played d5, d6. Maybe I just take. I might just capture, yeah. And if he takes with this pawn, play f4. His rook b8. Hmm. All right, let's do this. My a pawn's weak. I want to get at this structure. Says, go ahead and take my a pawn. Let's first take here, and then I will take your a pawn. Do do do. Okay. This feels better for me. I mean, I am up a pawn. Now, if f5, I'm thinking maybe I check and I can pick this up at some point. Now, let's cut him off. Yeah, he definitely botched this. Is he going to go here? Maybe. Knight G4 threats. Yikes. I 
Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Let's do this. So now if he takes, I can go bishop a7, I'm thinking. Huh. Okay, John. You're in a good position still. Don't... Don't do anything unnecessary. In a very good position still. I'm going to double up the rooks now. I don't think he can take d7. Too dangerous. This is winning if I play it right. 100%. back okay try to attack some weaknesses time time Maybe rook d5 would have been good there. I don't know. Let's try to prep rook d5. I think he's messing up now. He definitely messed that up. He's all pinned. That's his big problem here. Solidify that, and I think I can just run my A-pawn. And he's going to sack. Because what else can he really do? Restrict his knight. And that's over, guys. Just push. No need to take unnecessary pawns. Oh. This is still winning, though. <laughs> I think. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm almost giving you a heart attack here, guys. Oh, finally. Don't blunder your queen. <laughs> Alright, now I've got enough time. <laughs> Alright, we got it. We got it, guys. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, didn't have to let that H-pawn get all the way down there. I mean, taking would be fine, too. <laughs> I did not realize that after this, I can't actually stop his h-pawn. I think the easiest is actually to play queen takes f7, which I saw, and then take here, but I didn't realize that I'd also be attacking his pawn here. Alright, we got it. Man, this is stressful. This is stressful.
I gotta turn on my fan, guys. But, off to a very good start here. Four out of five. That's right, Chessie Bus. Hey, Halvard. I'm doing well. Hope you are, too. It's amazing how when someone has a knight, even when you're completely winning, if your opponent has a knight, you always have to watch out for, for tricks. And he almost tricked me there with some sort of knight h4 at some point. Even though his knight was so severely restricted by my pawns, I still almost managed to fall for something. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't play for f5 in that game. I definitely thought, if I go back, when I established my pawn in on d6, I thought at some point very soon he should play f5. And then try to threaten f4. But he didn't. I think once I get an a4, especially once I take the a pawn, I'm very, very happy here. Because what can he really do? I have the two bishops, I have two passed pawns, I have an extra pawn. I mean, if he doesn't do something with f5 or hurt me somehow around my king, he's busted here. Round six coming up. I'm going to get a strong player. Platy three. Okay. Here we go, guys. I'm out of coffee and I'm out of water. This is not good. All right. Let's keep the train going. We're 2-0 oh with the Scandi so far. The Scandi train has no brakes. Come on, guys. Mm hmm. Carlson played this against Jukish in the Olympiad. I think Carlson went for g3, bishop g2 instead of bishop f4. Alakine is also out of water, yes. Or Elohim, if we're going to pronounce it correctly. Okay, uh, queen a5 or take on c3? I think take. And then swipe his bishop. Nab his bishop. Interestingly, I think this transposed to a theoretical position. Black's good here, though. Black is totally fine. Uh, queen f6 is usually what you want to do here. We'll play that. Queen c7 I can maybe take here. So he's going to trade. All right. So he's going to play this end game. He's going to try to squeeze me with the bishop against the knight. Hmm. C4 immediately. Really? This is going to bring his king up, I think. That's the point of that move. All right, let's double. I think he's going to go, okay, he's going to double like that. Now I want to reposition my knight. Yeah. If d5, I think I take once and go here. I don't know, but he has bishop g4. i got to keep that in mind. Bishop g4 could be an issue. Uh, I think it's still okay. I think it's still fine. Let's attack. He attack, but he also protect. Staying solid, the Scandi way. Pawns on light squares restrict the bishop. D4 
debating whether to play b5. But I think g6 is just helpful in a lot of cases. Just the ability to play h5 later. Maybe f5 under some circumstances. Yeah, so he doesn't want me to play b5. I think that's the message with that move. I'm going to go a5 before he plays b4. Okay, interesting position. I mean, we've got a little bit of a standoff going here. <clears throat> He's going to play bishop e4. Probably bishop back somewhere on this diagonal now. I'm just going to go back and say if he takes, I'm going to take with this pawn. I think it's very hard for him to make progress even after he captures my knight. I know I slightly damaged my pawns, but that's a typical capture in the Scandinavian. You get the g-file to work with too, you can sometimes bring the rook into g4. I think all in all that's fine. So probably the only thing I'm really worried about here is if he plays d5, but he can't play d5 yet. So I think we're holding steady. Now, <clears throat> c5, d5. Bunch of trades. Rook g4, also maybe d5. And he's coming into e5 next, huh? Hmm. Maybe b5 here? This is interesting. Let's try this. Hmm. Because now I'm threatening b4. So he has to take some action against that. He's got rook e5 as an option. Of course, he can take if he wants. If he takes twice, I can play either rook d5 or king e6. He's going to do it this way. Interesting. Okay, so now b4 check. And he's going to say that, hey, I've got this protected pass pawn. Hmm. All right, I think I got to go for this. Mm. I don't know. I don't know about this end game. This King D3 looks pretty good here. Yeah, I think this endgame is a problem, actually. Problem for me. He has check here. He can win my f7 pawn. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. King e3 looks good. I can't get at his b-pawn very easily, which is really bad. Okay, if here I can go here and, and try to check him there, at least. It's something. So maybe he'll come back with this king. I don't think he'll allow me to do that. Hmm, he is actually going to allow me to do that. Surprising. Hmm. And he can win this last pawn, of course, on the king side. It's probably sufficient for victory.
Okay. Yeah, I think this is just losing. But if I can win his H pawn, I hold. Actually, maybe he blundered. I don't think he should have given that check. Maybe he blundered this. Hmm. I don't know. Nah, I think he's still got it. But it is a rook pawn. So that always makes it more difficult. I offered a draw just to make sure. Um, it wasn't a threefold. I think I gotta wait here. Let's keep waiting. Be some Vancouver type draw. If I'm really lucky. Not after that one. Yeah, now he can march his king up. Yeah, king f6 is going to win. Mm, okay. Yeah, that was nice. Nicely played by him. Just trying to think... If I could play this better. It's pretty darn tough. His rook's in a good spot defending both of these pawns. And he still has the option of advancing. Yeah, once I allow rook g g6, I think it's busted. Yeah. And I'm not quite in the box, am I? Because if ever I take this pawn, you can see I'm just one square too far away. He promotes. That's what's meant by the box. So if you want to check to see if a pass pawn can promote while your king is trying to stop it. So you take the pawn, you draw an arrow, like a mental arrow, arrow down to the queening square. And then an equidistant box. So, it would look like this. And because my king can't step into that box with the next move, it's losing. So, yeah, and as his pawn gets closer to promotion, of course, the box gets smaller and smaller. Potser Master cheered 4 bits. That fat kid cheered 500 bits as a girl from Egypt is pulling for you. Thank you. So I lose that one. The Scandy goes down, unfortunately. Chris Bow, 08, thanks for the subscription. Four months in a row. Let's see what games are going on here. One game left. Where white is losing. John, what was the point of B5? Well, point of B5 probably was not a good move. But I was trying to get some counterplay. I felt like I was getting a little bit squeezed there. So yeah, I was trying to develop some counterplay against his queen side and threaten b4. But I think the problem with b5 is I make this pawn too weak in the long run. Feels like he should have been able to win easier somehow right around here. 
mean, if he just goes for my B pawn, let's say, if he just plays rook B5, I didn't really see what I could do here. I was going to try something with check and like F4 or something, but I think he made it a little bit harder on himself than it, than it had to be, but, you know, this is blitz. That sort of thing happens. And if I could eliminate his H pawn, I would be good here, but I can't do that. I didn't really see a good way to hold this pretty tough rook end game. I'll have to analyze that one later, but I don't I think it's losing. His rook on h6 is too good. Thanks, Oculus. Where did I go wrong this game? It's a good question. Maybe I shouldn't have played knight f5. I thought knight f5 was decent, but after trade trade rook d1, or rook e1 rather. He was actually in the driver's seat. Okay, I'm still on a good score, though. I have four points. Here are the standings. This is round seven. Andrew's up there with five and a half. The bird. Okay. I like to fianchetto my bishop against the bird. And do this. Hmm. Knight a3. Okay, let's go here in preparation for b5. Now, usually they go queen e1 and they try for e4. It's typically the way you'll see white play this. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I wonder if he has some knight b5 ideas in mind. also think about taking. So if queen c7, knight b5. Oh, but that feels okay for me. I'm going to do this. And then if he takes, take with a queen. He can play c4 after that, but I don't think I should be greatly worried by that. Okay, so I can't take twice because he has bishop f4 is what he's saying. B5 comes to mind. Yeah, let's do it. Try to gain back some of this time. Or at least narrow the difference. Saxy90, thank you for the resubscription. It's good to see you, Andreas. Hmm, waiting move. Let's develop. I don't quite understand king h1. I mean, maybe he wants to get out of this diagonal. I guess he does, but it seems odd. Okay, so if I take with the bishop, is he going to play f5? I don't think I really care about that. So I have a lot of moves here. e5, just moving the queen to queen b7. I think I like queen b7. Line up on this diagonal. Hint at d4. This position's fine for me. Totally fine. Let's take. Ninety four. Should I save my bishop? I think let's save the bishop. I can always play this later. Probably shouldn't let him play knight take c6. But yeah, I want to bring this in. But now I am threatening to take this pawn, perhaps, so I think he'll probably capture here. And I think I'll take with the h pawn. Let's pre move that. Hmm.
Knight g4 is also kind of tempting, but I think the knight is better on e4. Expecting queen d3. Somehow feel he's going to play that move. Queen c1. Inviting b4. Okay. Just kind of eyeing up some squares around my king, but this move seems less natural and seems to invite b4. Yeah, queen there. Okay. Let's take that guy. Okay. Can I just take this? Ah, he's going to go rook h4 uh, I don't know let's take with the bishop he also can do this immediately can't he I don't know. F6 seems helpful. Might have to park my king on E6 in the future, I don't know. Maybe H5 next. Or bishop back. But I, I really don't like this check here, which he can do at any moment. But it's not easy for him either. He's down a pawn, and if he doesn't do something here, I'm probably in decent shape. He's going to play g4. Or that, which I did not see. Don't know if that's a good idea for him, though. His queen's away from home now. Check. Counterattack. Trying. Let's just trade. Target is weak pawns. I think my center structure is pretty nice. I'm not going to trade queens. So I'm going to try to go after his king. Gotta try. Try 
try to track that pawn down. Uh, this is risky though. I don't know. Ah, wasn't sure what to do there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even have the game up, so I couldn't even click draw if I wanted to. Oh, I'm getting mated now. Queen g5. Yeah. Yeah, just rook h7. Mm. Ah, that game hurt. I let his a pawn get way too far. Ooh, I missed some good moves here, too. Just rook takes e2 in this position was winning. Should be winning. I missed queen e1 somewhere? Yeah. Queen e1, he just steps up here, though, right? Where's my follow-up? Unless you mean queen e1 somewhere. Oh, you mean queen e1 right here, yeah. I just didn't see it, guys. I didn't see it. That's close to mating, though. You're right. It's hard. It's very intense. But yeah, queen e1 here. It's not easy to checkmate him, though. I have checks on f1 or h1. Check here. He seems to escape. Probably have a perpetual at the very least, but... Or maybe not. His queen f2. Brutal game. Amir Gunner donated 583. When is your next tournament for GM Norm? Looking forward to them. Yeah, I'm not playing for a while. At least for a Grandmaster Norm tournament. Probably in the fall. But nothing confirmed as of now. Yeah, this, this game. I faded his attack nicely. I think after this, queen takes a7 really surprised me. I mean, that's a fairly useless pawn down here. Admittedly, I didn't see that it was hanging, but it's going the complete opposite direction from where he should probably be playing. So I felt like after that happened that I was better. You know, and then I got to take on g4. I've got this nice central mass. Uh, material is actually equal here, right? But I have one uninterrupted pawn majority, and he has four scattered... Isolated pawns. Two of them are passed, but it felt like they should be more weaknesses than strengths. I think it's important that I keep the queens on the board. I was tempted to trade queens, but I mean, maybe even that would have been decent. But okay, all right. So still on four points with three rounds remaining, including this round. This is round eight. Not sure what a6 is. Some sort of interesting Benoni attempt, I guess. Hmm. I'm just going to develop. Bring this knight back. We'll feed in Keto this dark square bishop. Put this knight here, go for e4. Which I think I can play right away. If a4, I probably won't take it. I'll probably play rook b1. But there's also e5 to contend with, so I think that black should probably try to do something about that soon. Hmm. Black's actually going to invite e5. Interesting. Well, I feel like I should play this, so I'm going to do it. Knight g4. Okay. 
Okay. Probably d6. Yeah, try to undermine. Hmm. There's bishop f5 coming, maybe. You could also play rook a1, though. Rook a1 is maybe timely here. I don't know. Trade, I'm thinking I defend e5. Could be mass trades. Yeah, it's really tough, guys, those time scrambles. I know it's easy to sit there and Monday morning quarterback. I do it myself, but it's just very easy to miss moves in time, time scrambles, always. Okay, here I'm debating e6 or taking on d6. I think e6 is probably better. And if he takes g7, uh, b2 rather, I take f7 check. This is Dmitry Gurevich, really? Hmm. I haven't seen his name for a long time. Grandmaster from the Chicago area. Okay, so if I play h3, what are you going to do? I think he's got to take, and then my thinking is he can't play knight e5. I know I'm underdeveloped here, but I will get developed pretty soon. Like knight f6, bishop d3, let's say. He might try to do some quick queen a5 business. Whoa, he's going to sack. Ah, because he wants... Um, hmm, interesting. I think I got to take. I don't think it's wise not to capture there. Now, I think I should... Oh, bishop g2 runs into knight d3. Oof. This actually might be a decent exchange sack for him. Can play f4, f4 knight check. I think I kind of have to play the bishop here. But he has this queen f8 move that's really annoying. Yeah. Mm, it's a tough exchange sack to deal with. Let's do this. Yeah, I feel like I should hide my king here. He's got a lot of compensation here. I'm going to try to push h5, I suppose. Queen there. He might take it. But if he takes it, at least in the future, he's got to... Oh, wow. Wow. Very nice. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize that was a threat. Wow. That's nice. It's a very nice checkmate by him. Oof. That was the point of queen f5. Oh, brutal. Yeah. I think I'm losing here. Is there queen f5? So that's just a massive threat. Yeah, he played that well. And going here with the king doesn't help because he checks. And then he can do the same thing. Um, so that doesn't leave too many moves. I mean, it leaves, like, bishop here trying to create an escape route, which looks really bad. 
uh, taking, of course. But if I take, it just feels like I should lose this with this bishop coming into h3. Queen d1, this threat. Yeah, I think I just ran into a really good exchange sack. I don't know what to play here. King e2, I guess, is also a move. King e2, but queen f8 once again, threatening this. Bishop g2, my pieces just look totally misplaced. Can start trying to creep in. Yeah, did anyone see that coming? I sure didn't. <laughs> that was just very nice. I thought he was playing this move more so to try to guard the h5 square and just generally coordinate. You know, maybe I these squares too, but nope. That's just a big checkmate in two threat. Why not just f4? What do you mean f4? Oh, you mean here. Yeah, f4 was also a candidate, but I didn't want to allow his knight in to d4 after that. And I think still this pawn's really... I just have a lot of weak pawns here. But yeah, that was probably better than what I tried. Mm, so I've lost three straight games. Not good, guys. John, how do you feel about DeMarcus Cousins signing with the Warriors? Hey, as Stephen A. Smith said, the rich get richer, right? <laughs> It's pretty insane. Now, I think the, the NBA probably has to adjust the salary cap stuff. I mean, you can see this in the NFL, too. Like, players taking less than what they would get from other teams to play with already good teams. I don't know if that's quite right. That doesn't bode well for the parity of the league. Like with Tom Brady on the Patriots. He takes less money so he can stay with the Patriots and have them especially build... A strong team signing free agents. And I don't I don't think that's really fair. Not that the Warriors haven't deserved their success, but yeah, some of this stuff is getting out of hand. I mean I know Boogie Cousins is coming off of an Achilles injury, but <laughs> the guy is worth more than five million per year. But then again I heard he didn't get really any offers. But I'm sure someone would pay him more than $5.3 million or whatever he's making the one-year deal with the Warriors. There's players far worse than him earning much more. I mean, the guy's an all-star. Okay, let's look at another game here. Uh, so Mukin 1 is still in first place, 7.5 out of 8. Is Andrew playing? I don't see him. He must have lost. I'm going to run get some water, guys. I'll be right back. All right, 
I got to try to finish strong here in these remaining two rounds. Can still get the positive score, but I've dropped the ball the last three rounds. I have been playing Grandmasters, but still. Like that bird game, I should not have lost. I should not have let myself lose. So what happened to Andrew? I think he lost a game. Yeah, he must have lost to someone. I see some Title Tuesday regulars who are always near the top. Dmitry Andraken, that's two Vladimirovich, 90. Renato Terry Lujan, strong I am. Thanks for the final problem. Keeping it classy today, yeah. I feel I play better even in online chess when I'm slightly dressed up, you know, tucking in the shirt. <laughs> Just a mindset thing, right? So are we waiting on any games here? One more game for this round. The chess man Dan trying for a stalemate. But he's going to get mated instead. All right, guys. Two more rounds. Try to finish strong. Stolen candy. NM stolen candy. <laughs> Let's keep going. Ah, he says fan of the stream. Stolen candy. Appreciate that. So, Knight C3... You know, I'm going to play this line. I don't remember too much about this, but this is what I recommended in my chessable repertoire. You face this gambit so irregularly. Queen h5. Hmm. Against that, I am tempted to sack the e-pawn. I mean, taking here is probably critical. I think it is. But very tempted to sack... Let's do it. We're going to try to try to make the gambit here. Take the pawn. Take this pawn. Meanwhile, I get rapid development. Castling. Rookie 8. Blitz psychology. And just general psychology. Make the aggressive player play positions that they don't want to play. Yep, that's correct. I'm on 4 out of 8. I was actually on 4 out of 5, wasn't I? Not even 4 out of 6. Okay, so Ricky 8 here. Ricky 8 here, and you look like you're in trouble. can also play check first, and then Ricky 8. But no, let's go Ricky 8 first. Yeah, this e5 line is called, like, the Lemberger counter gambit. Lemberger or Limburger? I don't remember which one. One of the two. He's got to be very careful here not to lose a piece. Or lose his queen. It's pretty tough, because if his queen moves, I take on e4, and then I might just unpin and... Possibly attack his queen. I think I probably will attack his queen no matter where it goes. Because he has a hard time putting the queen somewhere other than a light square. Uh, dark square, rather. Okay, so he goes king there. That might be one of the better moves, yeah. Now I have knight c6. Uh, if I take on e4, he takes, and he's going to be threatening this at the end. So probably just knight c6. Just thinking for a moment. Yeah, let's keep it simple. 
This guarantees the win back of the pawn. I didn't see a way. King f1 was a good defensive move. I didn't see a way to punish him there, so... I think I'll just go for the pawn and hopefully be doing pretty well because this king has already moved. Mm -hmm. Stick. Hey, Blade Master. Okay, so I can take. That's pretty simple. Guess he's going to take with the queen. Don't see any cool back rank tricks here. Maybe knight e6 also. Now let's just take. It's probably simplest. Let him take this one if he wants. We'll go here. So I'm consistently trying to offer him material because I think he knows that he's behind the development and he needs to catch up. Can take on B2, perhaps. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Rook here, here, if he takes bishop d5. I have to calculate. I might get mated if I do that uh, and take material. But Okay, rook d1. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. Let's take. This is guarded. I'm also threatening that. Maybe. Assuming this is not hanging. <laughs> Big assumption. Also, if he takes here, I can take and then play bishop d4, I think. I don't know, but then he takes. That's that's tricky. So maybe I can't do that. Might need to play g6 first in a lot of these lines. Bishop b5. Hmm, this is some seriously tricky business on the back rank. I think I can play this. And this guards the back rank. So I can take his bishop next. Okay, let's just get out of any trouble there. And go attack his weaknesses. Should be winning. Secure. Yeah, and this is a real, real nice position. Let's just check him one more time. Bring the king up. I mean, he's going to play fast here, of course, but there's not really anything to do. There's very little he can attack. This is his problem. But I should not get too lazy here. I should actually start trying to win. <laughs> okay. 
Thanks for the game, Stolen Candy. Again, he said he's a fan, fan of the stream. So, yeah, shout out to you. Yeah, that got tactical. Uh, let's see. I think this was a key moment. Bishop b5, rook b8. So there was some tricky business with that threat, which he probably saw. I think he realized that that was a threat. But the key thing is that after this trade, that my bishop is defending d8. That's why I can do this. Because otherwise he'd be mating me with this, right? So I saw I could also take with the g pawn, but you know, you want to keep the pawns together. So, but yeah, I think this line is a pretty good option against um, the Black Mar Damar, which this can happen via the other move order, probably a more common move order, right? d4, d5, e4. In this game, we had e4, d5, the Scandinavian, and then d4. So, you know, even if you're a d4, d5 player, it's good to know what to do against this takes. Most of the games I've seen in this line go like this, and then black takes, or I played bishop f5 a lot, which I think is also decent, but white probably gets some decent counterplay after this. Um, yeah, there's stuff like this that can happen. Bishop f4, e6. So, yeah, this e5 move is interesting, striking back in the center, and then queen h5. When he plays queen h5, that feels like a move he's probably studied, so I'm sure taking on d4 is critical, but I like knight f6. Because even though he wins a pawn out of this, now he's behind in development. Again, that psychology. Trying to force a gambiteer to, you know, actually defend and try to secure material themselves. Play the Grob, subscribed. And 120, resubscribe for three months. Thanks, guys. Okay, this is... This game was a quick draw. <laughs> Six moves. Grandmaster draw in... Wow. Huh. See, why would white do that? Vasily Korchmore, he's trailing by a half point, and he just takes a draw with white against the leader. With one round remaining. Why, why would you do that? That just looks very suspicious, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> maybe he's doing it for placement purposes like okay he's saying i'm probably not going to win this tournament but i want to get top three but still you have white it's an online blitz tournament try to knock this guy off let's look at andrew's game playing on draken totally drawn position Yeah, there is money on the line, but one round remaining and you have white and you're just going to give the guy half a point ahead of you an easy draw, that's never a good strategy. Or it would be very rare that that would be a good strategy. Because there's going to be quite a few people on seven and a half out of eight, uh, seven and a half out of nine, rather. Yeah, at least two others. Um, wow, this WIM is playing really strong. Seven and a half out of nine. And then a host of people on seven out of nine. I mean, there probably isn't any sort of collusion. I would doubt it, but... It just, for one thing, it feels like going against the spirit of a online blitz tournament <laughs> to take a, a quick draw that feels really, really lame. And also, I just question that strategy. With black, maybe. Maybe you do it with black. But even then, I would feel kind of dirty about it. Okay, these guys should just draw. I don't know if Andraken's trying desperately to win this or what, but it's not going to happen. Andrew's never going to lose this position. White has one threat, which is f6. Trading queens is also a dead draw, but I guess Andrew's going to keep the queens on the board. Okay, there they go. Okay, so this is Corrales versus Dr. Mortimer. Black pushing for that win. But very little time. Hmm. 
So that's interesting. Black's king is trapped. But black can push these pawns. And the king is not truly trapped, is it? Because black could always give a check here later. And try to push the king out of this ideal f2 square. Hmm. It's possible black could draw this. It might be a fortress. Or, sorry, that white could draw this. Black would have no, tr no, no trouble drawing this. Uh, the ghost of Banquo used five bits. Thank you. So yeah, now white's just going to shuttle this bishop. Bishop f1. Yeah, I think this is a fortress. If black loses this pawn, it's definitely a fortress. And how does black get their king out without losing this pawn? Bishop f1. Black just doesn't have a move here. <clears throat> 120 says, Illuminati all up in the Title Tuesday turkey. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, the last few Title Tuesday tournaments, I've seen some early draws. Some Grandmaster draws going into the last couple rounds. There was one really bizarre draw, too, where I think Amon... I watched Amon's commentary of it later. And it was one of the late rounds, round 9 or something, 10 maybe. And one of the guys, also I think an IM, drew one of the leaders in a winning position. He just offered him a draw, and then he said something in the chat like, oh, I forgot that I had this pawn and that I was actually winning. <laughs> so, obviously I'm not suggesting that there's collusion, but it's there's some weird stuff that happens in these tournaments, man. <laughs> oh, Ghost, is your username a Macbeth? Illusion. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, what else is going on here? Nermi TV. Last game. Nermi is up a pawn. I think Nermi is also a streamer. And he won. All right, so I'm on five out of nine. Going into the final game. Vova Chess. CM Vova Chess. So we've secured the even score, but we want that positive score. Ah, okay. Yeah, I gotta brush up on my Shakespeare. Bogo Indian. D6. Okay, let's castle. 120 cheered 100 bits. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, so now here... Is there some sort of tactical problem with this? Hmm, maybe not. I'm just looking at knight d5 for a second. I'm going to do it, actually. So I think in the end, it's going to be hard for him to hold his d4 pawn, for one thing. I'm trying to reach a somewhat favorable endgame out of this. Yeah, so here I could take on c6, but his bishop escapes. And unless I have something on b7, I don't think it's worth it to do that. Probably goes to... Probably goes to a5. Let's just do this. So now he's going to take here, probably. Doesn't have to, but I think he will. And then I'm thinking trade and play rook c1. Or even rook e1. Maybe start with rook e1. Yeah, I think that's more accurate. Defend this pawn, prepare this, because otherwise he would take here. 
And if he moves his queen here or here, I'm thinking I can do that is what I am looking at. And I feel that this should be somewhat better for me. Because c7 is, is weak in a lot of cases. All right. Thanks, Bard. Says, nice haircut. Thank you. Hey, Golo Dion. We're just hanging out. End of Title Tuesday here. First Tuesday of every month. Big boy money haver, thanks for the 100 bits. So I think he missed this move. Or maybe underestimated it. I'm not terribly worried about bishop g4. I don't know if he's going to, yeah, I guess try to win my, my e-pawn somehow. Or what. So here I have a nice choice. Maybe even just rook c4. Because if he pushes, he loses his bishop. Could take on b7, but yeah, then he takes... I think rook c4 is probably the most secure. I don't think queen takes e2 is going to work. That seems too radical. It's a move you look at, though. And a bishop takes, I take here. He does have queen h5 to escape the pin. But then I have rook h4, don't I? No, but I guess his queen can just run away somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, if I do this, he has a hard time guarding that, doesn't he? That took me a second to realize. I thought he could just go here, but I actually can just play rook takes e2 then. I don't know why I didn't realize that at first. So that means he has to play queen back here, and then I play rook e4, and that should just win. I was calculating like rook h4 here and then go after his pawn or something, but of course I can just do that. And if he checks on b1, I can just play bishop f1. Up the piece. So he's losing material, as far as I can tell. I think he's going to try to win this a2 pawn at the end. Yep. There he goes. Okay, let's just take the file to start. We like files. And I like extra pawns. Bring that guy in. Let's check on e4. So let's not allow it. This is nice because it defends here. Also tethers his rook to the back rank. gather some pawns now. I 
Just trying to make sure I don't drop anything. That was also hanging, I guess, but... Um... Let's take... Go here, and look to play Rook C8, and trade. Just make it simple. Trade. Trade when you're ahead. Centralize. Bring this in a little closer. Really taking my time on this one. At some point, I'm going to move my kingside pawns forward, but I'm just kind of waiting for a second. Okay, let's do it now. I do have the wrong color bishop, so I have to be careful about that. But with the extra d pawn, should be winning. No checks for him. It's a threat. Man. Am I failing to win this up a bishop? This is awful. <laughs> I'm so bad, guys. I might still be winning, but this is really bad. It is still winning, fortunately, for me. <laughs> Beautiful technique, right?
So what's the easiest way to win this? I was actually thinking of sacking my bishop on g6 and getting three pawns, or possibly more for it, but I didn't see a good time to do it, because if I do it here, he has check. So what's the easiest way to win this? Attack f7 somehow? I mean, maybe the way I played it, it's fine. Like just eventually crawl forward with f3, g4, but it got a little dicey in time pressure. Yeah, I, I, okay. This position should be totally winning. Maybe I rushed h6 or something. He has some checks. Even here, queen e4 doesn't quite feel right. Because queen c3, his idea is if I play h7, he's going to check here and then take this pawn. Ah, what if I check from this square? That's much better. But even then, so after his king moves somewhere, I can't go to there because he gets mated. And also here I have this check. So I think that's pretty crushing. He has to go to d7. And now something like... It's still a little tricky because h7 he has check and pick up this pawn. But something like... Queen g7, check. Eh, he's got a few checks. Maybe here better. Yeah, that should also be winning. Queen here, check. Yeah, queen g7, I agree with you guys. Okay. So at least I didn't miss, mess it up completely at the end, even though I did lose my h-pawn for nothing. See, if I had lost my d-pawn instead of the h-pawn, that would have been a draw for black because I have the wrong color bishop. But yeah, I was able to get the, the queens off the board, which is what I wanted to do this whole time. All right, so who is... This game is still going. Wow. Wow, Arctic. Arctic is having a fantastic tournament. She's a WIM, has 7.5 out of 9, and is playing for first place in the final game. And it looks to me like she is holding a draw. I think this is a book draw. Another opposite color bishop endgame. White needs to get one of those pawns through, or win black's bishop, but yeah, I don't think it's easy. This is another endgame. I've alluded to this book in the past, but 100 endgames you must know. This is another endgame that's in there. Whoa, and white played e7, and now it's just a dead draw. Why would white play e7 there? I mean, maybe they've been playing for... 50 plus, or close to 50 moves. And that was the only way to make progress. Oh yeah, this is move 149. So that's probably why white pushed. They were getting close to the 50 move rule. White needed to make a pawn move, but... Yeah, black can lose this now. Barring a disaster. Just don't lose the bishop. So what does that mean for the final standings? So Korchmer, despite taking that draw with white, did reach 8.5 out of 10. So Mukin and Korchmer are going to tie for first. Arctic is going to tie for second, along with some other players on 8, including Andrew. I mean, I could understand White playing this, I guess, but... Nothing to do here. Hoping for an internet disconnection, as someone pointed out in the chess.com chat. <laughs> but there's also a chance your internet could disconnect too, right? Although actually, it would... Would it be a draw? Yeah, I think it would be a draw. if white disconnected. <laughs> Bishop c8. <laughs> oh, white could have taken here instead. Okay, now we're going to have a result. <laughs> okay. Well, also for Mukin, you know, Mukin 
agreed to the quick draw, and they did tie for first, so they're probably happy about that. Actually, both those guys tied for first. So it worked out for them in the end. Um, but yeah, I still wonder about that round nine decision. I would not have done that. Definitely not for Korchmer. Mukin, it makes more sense, but I definitely would have done it for Korchmer. But hey, they tied for first, so... All right, so I finished with a positive score, 6 out of 10. Where did I finish in the standings here? 43rd. Yeah. I only gathered one point in the remaining... Did I really only get... No, I got two points in the last five rounds, right? Yeah, because I started with 4 out of 6. So, no, 4 out of 5, rather. Yeah, so very strong start to this tournament. Took down a couple strong GMs. But, yeah. Then had trouble in the mid part of this tournament. This also happened in one of my previous Title Tuesdays. I think I lost three in a row at one point, despite having a pretty good start. So, yeah. As Chessie Buzz said, four out of five and then two out of five. So, salvaged it in the last two games. Won the last two, so that's good. Play the Grub. Cheered 801 bits. That's an interesting donation. <laughs> Love the strong-willed chess. Thank you, Play the Grob. Yeah, I appreciate all your guys' support. I will be streaming tomorrow, too. Arena Kings on chess.com. So if you're interested in tuning in, feel free. That starts an hour earlier than this one started today. So 2 o'clock p.m. Central. Didn't see too many other streamers in the mix here. I saw John Ludwig Hammer. Or Yoon Ludwig Hammer. Also, Blitzstream is in. Blitzstream got a, got a good score. Blitzstream is always doing well in online events. He's a very good Blitz and Bullet player. 7.5 out of 10. That's a really strong score. Yeah, that's the score that people in the chat were saying. If I could get, that would be amazing. So, hey. I mean, anytime you make a score like that, entitled Tuesday, that's really strong. Uh, Andrew. Andrew was probably streaming. He got a very nice score. 8 out of 10. Didn't see too many others. Ah, Niklas Hushenbet. Okay. Shout out to Nicholas. He got seven and a half. Yeah, Juden Ludwig Hammer. Uh, Krikor. Krikor got the same score as I. Yep. Typically strong. Although a little less strong than usual, I would say, Title Tuesday. Does the fact that you're streaming hinder your play at all? Yeah, I would say somewhat Astro World. I mean, I'm pretty used to it at this point. But yeah, it definitely does. All right, guys. I'm going to log off now. But I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, yeah, tomorrow is the 4th of July, but I will be streaming Arena Kings. Blitz Arena Kings for two hours here on chess.com. So hope to see you guys then. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate all the support. Um, stolen candy again, my opponent from round, what was it? Nine. Thanks to you again for the game and tuning in. I'll see you guys later. Bye.